Welcome to the studio, it's Froyal here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today we're creating beautiful collage with this fabulous inspiration and look at the glorious project that we make. I hope you're gonna join me and stick around for our creative adventure. This is our inspiration today, the beautiful handmade glorious marble paper from Kozo Studio. Now you've seen me use a selection of papers. Yes, I get a little obsessive with my circles. <laughs> I love textured papers. It's one of my favorite elements in my collages. And now I'm revealing to you my secret source of where I get all my fabulous papers from. Kozo Studio. You'll find a link in the description under the video for a 10% discount code. So make sure you click the link or else put in the code FROYLA for 10% off. You'll find all of my absolute most favorite papers on the website there. I've always said the best papers come from Thailand. <laughs> so this is what we're using today for our inspiration, these glorious colors, these deep turquoise and greens in this paper. And I'm going to make some jelly prints. We're gonna pull out the spray inks and then we're gonna put a fabulous collage together using this beautiful paper. Right, so we're going to have a little color exploration today. But first of all, we need some solid base papers in phthalo turquoise. Then we can create some layers and we can make some textures with some stamps. And the goal is to create a beautiful collage with the inspiration of that fabulous turquoise green marble paper. Now I'm more of a blue green turquoise kind of a person than I am a yellow green. But I think we should have a little experiment and play with all sorts of greens and see which ones we think work better with our fabulous inspiration paper. So we're going to start with some solid phthalo turquoise backgrounds. And then we're going to pull out some other colors, mix it up, have a little experiment, make a heap of prints and see what we can come up with. Right, so this is what I have left on my roll off. I did a couple of prints with the fabulous phthalo turquoise. Now I've got some pastel ultramarine. Basically, it's the same thing, but with a whole lot of white. <laughs> It just means I don't have to mix it. I know, right? <laughs> just being a bit lazy, it comes out of a tube. Let's add a little bit of bright aqua green. That's pretty fun. Liquitex Basics. We're going to put that on the plate right over the background of the ghost print. Now, I'm not going to blend it hugely because I like the abstract quality of the mixes of the greens. I think that will work well with our fabulous focal point and our feature piece. Now you might have seen my fabulous number stamps before. I have used them. You'll find them at PM Artist Studio. Absolutely glorious. Love them to bits because they make fabulous background texture. I'm stamping onto a piece of the Kozo paper because I want to see how well this beautiful paper absorbs the paint. And then we're going to splash it with ink, give it a little tester, see how it goes. That is just fun. I have a whole collection of these beautiful number stamps and they look really good together as a texture or a background. I also have a bigger one because I like to use numbers as a focal point sometimes and these ones were a little small if you want a focal point. So beautiful Mariah worked with me to cut a section off one of the other designs making this one a little bit bigger with the numbers. Can you see the difference? They're just a little bit bigger. They're really good for focal points or using the numbers if you really want the numbers to be standing out. Otherwise, use them in conjunction with the other stamps and make fabulous backgrounds. See, it works really well. So I'm stamping on over stamping and creating a textured background, both on my gel plate and on my fabulous Kozo paper. 
it all just becomes texture when you over stamp like that and it makes great background so if you're looking for the bigger one it's called the designer special I know, <laughs> because i just wanted to make one with a little bit bigger numbers on it <laughs> now what color are we going to pull that with and what will we do next with this piece? I think I'll keep adding to it and then I might spray it and see how well these beautiful textured fibers absorb the paint. Mm, it could be a little sticky still, but I think it's mostly dry. I'm going to go with some Titan Green Pale. I know, right? Have you ever heard me utter those words? <laughs> no, you haven't. Because we're heading into a new direction pulling out some new colors let's see what that does i do have some wet strength tissue and we'll try pulling the paint up with this it actually doesn't feel like i had enough paint on the plate so it may stick it may tear or it may not pull up the paint but that's okay because we've just started we can keep building up the textures on the plate. It'll be all right. It's only gonna be collage. We're gonna tear it up anyway. Let's see what happened. Yeah, see, look, I didn't put enough paint on the plate and it didn't pick it up, but it has created a really interesting texture. And I think I'd like to spray the rest of this. Look how cool it looks. Look at that, that looks really cool. I like that, I'm gonna give that a spray. We're gonna do that with the other piece as well. And we could even stamp over the top, that would work. Let's just pull a couple more prints, pick up the ghost print, and then we're gonna spray and stamp on those other papers. We'll add some of the dashes stamp to this one take it off put it on there it's a pretty simple process right let's see what we get this time i absolutely love the experimentation of it all sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but that's okay Righto, let's see what we got this time. Mm, that didn't pull up very well there. Oh man, I don't think this color likes me. <laughs> but I do like the texture it's creating by sticking and fussing on the plate. Look at that, look at that texture. I think maybe the paint's a bit old, it's been sitting in the drawer. It's a color I don't use often, but look how cool that texture looks. Right, so this time I grabbed the phthalo blue, threw it right on top, just to see if I could pull more of that texture off the plate. Oh man, I'm loving it. <laughs> I am loving it. Look at that, that looks fabulous. Yes. Right, so this time we're getting very experimental. I'm going to put some masks on the plate, which mask out the areas that are going to stay with this color. And then I'm going to run over with some interference blue and pull the print on the turquoise paper that I printed first of all. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work either. <laughs> Just so you know. I'm not sure if this is a great idea or a crazy one, but you know, I have to try. And I think the interference paint will just be so incredibly interesting, especially on the Thalo turquoise, right? So let's put that on, pull the masks off 
and then see what kind of print it'll take. The, maybe the paint might be too dry now, perhaps, but each idea leads to the next one and each print we take, we learn something about what we like, what we don't like, and what we're gonna try next. So I'm gonna try that on my fabulous Stalo Turquoise on this piece. We'll try it on this piece and I'm really not sure what's going to come up off the plate at this stage. I find out all my best ideas through experimentation. Righto, let's see what that did. Each time it's pulling some more up off the plate and we can see the masked out areas. That's going to look pretty nice. Have a look at those beautiful colors and the fabulous layers that we can see. We've got some numbers, some dashes and some masked out circle shapes. Yay! Well that print was great but it was blew up them where I wanted to head so this time yes that is green. <laughs> I need to head back to where I'm supposed to be starting, which was the green phthalo, beautiful marble paper with the gold through it. We need a little bit more green in the mix. So let's have a go with this one. Righto, I've got this background. Let's see what this is going to do. Well, that is definitely more the colour of where we were heading with our green. That looks pretty nice. Then we can print what's trapped under here on one of our other papers. Then I think we're going to definitely pull out the spray inks and have a little play with the previously printed papers. Let's add to this one. It's got some great background texture. This is on the fabulous Kozo paper. And then we're just adding another layer to the paper before we put on some fabulous sprays. That is looking great. The more layers you add to your prints, the more interesting they become, the more the colors slightly shift with each layer, and you don't know what you're going to get until you pull the print up. So don't give up if something's not working the way you want. Just try again, put another layer on your print and try some different shapes. The only way to get better with this kind of creativity is to keep trying different ideas and to keep experimenting with your printing. Right, so I'm going to do a couple of dramatic black numbers on this paper because the beautiful marble paper does have a black line through it. So, you know, we could get away with a bit of drama. <laughs> put that on using my jelly plate as a big stamp pad. And I'm going to put a little bit of spray on. I've got the Dina Wakely acrylic gloss spray, my new favorite spray ink. So let's put a little bit of that on, create a bit more texture and see how it dries. Oh man, that's just fun. That was the turquoise and this is the marine. Oh, that's a bit deeper. Yeah, liking that. Righto, that's fun. Which one can we attack next? <laughs> Yes, you knew the bronze would come out sooner or later. Adding to this fabulous piece that I was doing the over stamping on. Then I'm going to put on some spray ink. I do have a few of the Tim Holtz Dispress Oxide sprays. This one shabby shutters. I don't know, man. I don't know why it's called that. It just looks like a pale green to me. Anyway, we'll put some of that on. That absorbs really well into the beautiful... Kozo paper. What about some pine needles? Yeah, that sounds green. Oh yeah, that's very green. 
I do like the way the bronze is coming through the green. That's really fun because that's how our marble paper looks. So that's going to match nicely. And the paper's absorbing it just beautiful. I know it's a bit of a risky move, but I just want to add a little bit more of a pattern and create a different texture. So I've got some licorice of the eye zincs and this is Elizabeth St. Hilaire's stencil. Ta-da! See, it just creates another pattern and texture on my paper. Of course, it looks so good. We're going to have to try that again. Put on some bronze, put on some sprays, put on a little bit more texture. I like the way the bronze comes through the sprays. Designer special. <laughs> Which one do you think seems to work better? That's a really nice color. Yeah, it is. I think I like that color. And they all seem to work pretty well. Yep, I'm liking that. Should we do it? Should we do it? Ah, what the heck? Nothing to lose. Little bit of licorice. Create that pattern. Just adding some more texture. Right, so we'll see how all these papers dry and which ones we like the best. Sometimes you just have to be willing for it to all go to custard to find something really special. Right? It can only not work. <laughs> that's the worst thing that can happen. And that's okay. But sometimes the results just might surprise you. Right, so here is our inspiration and here are our fabulous prints. This one, you can see the background texture and the masks. It's a little blue in comparison. This one turned out a lot more in the beautiful turquoise and green tones. That's pretty nice and that matches well. Here's another one with the fabulous numbers stamp. I'm liking that. I love the texture. This one went, mm, I know, I got it carried away with the eye zinc in the licorice colour, but it was fun, you know, I was having my moment. <laughs> Loving the turquoise, that works really well. What do you think, what do you think? That sits very nice with our hero paper of the day. Uh, this one probably works a lot better because it's more in the green tones. Oh, this one's nice, that's a lighter tone, yes. I think I'm more partial to this one than any of the other ones. Or there's this one with more of the green and the bronze. You knew I'd go crazy with the bronze. You just knew it. And then these two are the ones that I pulled out with Elizabeth stencil. Ran the bronze over at the end there. And I'm loving these. They turned out absolutely glorious with that additional shape on top. That one's a little bit more blue. That one's definitely more green. And that matches perfectly with our paper of the hour. So let's pull out the art journal and put a fabulous collage together. Yes, it's going to be a tough decision to decide which ones I actually like the best. But before I pull out my art journal and we get started on the collage, I want to tell you about my next creative adventure. I've just designed the most comprehensive and detailed mixed media art class that I've ever made and I'm so excited. I can't wait to show you and to tell you all about it. Celebrate your creative self mixed media art class. A hundred days of collage is all about you exploring your creativity. I want to give you an opportunity to have the freedom to find your own creative voice, to really explore your artistic vision and to have the freedom 
to really dig deep into who you are and how you want to create. Over the course of this class, you'll embark on an artistic adventure with a unique collage project for each lesson. There are seven lessons and we will delve into seven exciting topics. First of all, we're going to start with a brief history of collage. Then we'll journey through the endless possibilities and diversity of paper. We'll explore color combinations and we'll discuss shapes and composition. There's going to be a lesson pulling out the drawing materials and having a lot of fun with mixed media techniques. And I've also included a basic lesson on jelly printing. I love jelly printing. <laughs> Every project you undertake will reflect your own individual style and interpretation. My primary objective for this class is to nurture your creative growth within a relaxed, fun and enjoyable environment. You'll find my teaching style to be informative but conversational. You're going to feel like you're right here with me in the studio, right next to me and we're creating together. Now this is only on Patreon because it's much deeper, it's much more personal. There's a video prompt one week and then the next week there's a live Zoom art coaching group chat hang out, I see what you're making, we can talk about it and it's a fabulous way to develop your own creative voice, to learn more, go deeper, have fun. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> so come and join me on Patreon. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Right, so I tore a piece off. Yes, it did feel almost sacrilegious, which is why I didn't want you to watch. <laughs> But seriously, you can't buy beautiful paper and then hoard it in the cupboard. Yes, I know you're doing that. You need to go and get it out and make art because that's what it's been created for. So now I just have to decide what I want to put with it. I really do like this print. It's a little blue, but we could go with blue. There is some blue in the paper. It does look fantastic. So that's possible. This one's also possible. That will work. The colors are glorious. We made so many prints in the right colors, right? Choosing the right colors is half your battle in creating fabulous art. But I don't know, man. I could go with this one. I'm rather liking it. It's deep and moody. Do I feel deep and moody? Actually, I think I just need to lighten up. I do like this one, so I think I'm going to take a section of this one. Maybe that area where you can see the fabulous shape there of the stencil that I sprayed on top. I think a section of that would work. What about we just start with that? Because man, we've got to start somewhere. Righto, I'm starting with this idea. I'm going to cut it here. Oh, this is the Kozo paper. Nice. So glad it handled it well. You know, because in my studio, there's a lot of loving going on. So you need to be pretty tough to survive. That's going to work fine there. I'm definitely putting this beautiful piece here. Maybe I'll cut a section of that. And then I'm going to tear a piece of this one, I think. I think, I think. It's only thoughts at the moment. Anything could change. I love the pattern on these prints. The colors are perfect. I've just got to get the right shape. And how much do we want? Of course, we don't want to cover too much of the glorious hero paper, but it's a pretty nice print as well. So, you know, we should add some of it. Let's have a look and see what we can do with that. I like the way you can see those shapes there. The colors are good. Righto, righto. We just have to trim it all down. That's the plan, Stan. Okay, so everything's had a trim. I'm loving this. I love the softer color. I love that you can see so many of the layers. You can see the numbers, my dashes stamp, and you can see the stencil as well. It all looks fabulous. It's got the right color tone to it. Now this piece is perfect. It looks exactly like this piece. It's the same color, the same tone. It's a beautiful pattern, but do we want to add it? That's the question. I could put it on there, but if I put it on there, I'm going to be losing a lot of that beautiful paper. And man, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I just don't know. I could put it this side, but if I put it this side, then I'm going to be losing the impact of that beautiful piece of texture there. And I don't think I want to do that either. 
Oh man, it's such a nice piece. Maybe I'll have to just make another collage with it. Sometimes your initial ideas don't always work and you have to kind of go with something else. I love this, I love this to bits. But if I put it on top of this paper, I'm taking away from the beauty of the paper and I don't think I want to do that. But I do want to add something just to contribute to the texture because I like multiple layers. So I might have a look through the other beautiful Kozo papers and see what's going to work. Righto, well, I've ripped out some of the white lace paper. This one's called Stones, I think. It's got a really cool pattern. Look at the pattern and the texture. And I'm thinking I'm going to put that on here like that right on that line of the beautiful gold there. And then if it's too stark and it doesn't integrate enough, I can always give it a spray or drop a little ink on it or do anything to it. But I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave this exactly like that because I love it. Righto, well, I'll glue all that down and then decide if that's gonna stay that way or if I'm going to add something else. What I like about this stones paper is that it's got a similar shape and pattern to what's happening here in the marble paper. So that looks really cool. It's adding a beautiful texture. I'm hoping that the underneath color is going to come through quite strong. I haven't used it before, so I'm not sure how transparent it goes, but usually with these beautiful handmade textured papers, they do go quite transparent with the white and lots of matte medium. <laughs> and I'm hoping that it should blend in really nicely. Otherwise, I'm just going to give it a little spritzer. So, you know, no drama if it doesn't, but I'm thinking that it probably will. This paper's down nice and flat. It's looking beautiful, very happy with it, totally love it. And it was a whole lot of fun creating those jelly prints. I've got a whole heap left over for more beautiful projects. Righto, we'll see how that dries. If it doesn't dry as transparent as I would like, I will just give it a little spritzer. But I do love the shape of it. It matches really well with these shapes here. And it's all making me very happy. Look how beautiful that is drying up. You can see the glorious color coming through. Yay! That was what I wanted and expected of the beautiful handmade lace papers. I love that. I love that so much. I want another piece here. <laughs> what can I say? I just want more. Always wanting more. Yes. So what I'm going to say is yes. And I'm thinking that I might give it a little spritzer with some butterscotch just to give it a little bit of shine. Look how nice that looks on there. That is going to work just beautifully. Love these papers. Oh, my gosh. Can you just be in love with papers? I mean, can you? <laughs> Why can't you? Of course you can. Oh, love it so much. It's running low, but there might be enough left in it. It's the bronze shimmer. I just think it'd look absolutely beautiful. I'll try and protect the rest of the page. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> we'll be, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's gorgeous. That's just Gorgeous. All right, well, I'll give you a close-up when it dries because you probably can't see how magnificent that bronze shimmer looks. And it does look better as it dries as well. Loving these papers. These are just beautiful. Had so much fun creating all those jelly prints. And now I've got some more for another day. Thanks for joining me today. Isn't the paper absolutely beautiful? I mean, you just want to roll yourself in it. Oh, <laughs> oh is that just me? 
Now, if you want more information, you will find the links, discount codes in the description under the video. Make sure you check that out. Have a look at the Kozo Studio website. Truly, your eyeballs are gonna fall out with how beautiful the paper is. And don't forget my fabulous new adventure on Patreon starts on the 6th of October. Come and join me there. I know you're going to love it. It's going to be so much fun. Jump in, join up with me, come and hang out and let's create art. So I'll leave you with the playlist for 100 days of collage just in case you missed any of the episodes. See you next time in the studio.